Good evening, everybody. I'm Steve Shamras, joined for a special hour by my colleague Cassandra McShepard. We're closing in on one year since Milwaukee Tonight first took to the airwaves, so this seemed like a perfect time to revisit some of our favorite hidden gems, remind you and us about our mission, and kind of, you know, renew our vows That's right, with the Steve. audience out there. Right. So tonight we are taking an hour to get into the people, places, and events that make this city great, from art to architecture, from food to festivals, neighborhood to nightlife. We are showcasing what makes Milwaukee and Cassandra, as our show's correspondent, may have one of the best jobs out of everybody in this building. You are always going somewhere and doing something cool. Steve, I have been again on the water wave and the boxing ring. It's been great. I've met so many wonderful people and uncovered so many hidden gems. It's really been quite phenomenal. And we love the places you have taken us, places that, you know, are in our neighborhoods, but people might walk by every day and not give a second look to. But that again is the hidden gem because there, mm -hmm. many of them are really hidden in plain sight. But I'm telling you, once you peel back the covers, uh, I find wonderful people, amazing stories, and hopefully great things for our viewers to get out and do and, and experience. And at the end of the day, you come back in one piece, so that's the important part. I do, so far. <laughs> <laughs> so if espionage is your thing, there is a hidden gem for that. Uh, when it reopened after closing down for a year due to the pandemic, I was there. Uh, Agent Dee Dee was there. Ah. <laughs> I'm looking for the safe house. I'm here to do an interview. Safe house? The safe house, yes. Mm, I'm not sure. Oh, oh, I'm really late on time. All right, listen. I'm Agent Dee Dee, and I need refuge. Can you help me, please? Okay. Down the alley, you're looking for a red door. Thank you. Know the password? You don't know the password? Where's your gun post? First gun post go. Second gun post go. Go in through the secret passageway. Run! There's no time, Diddy. Go! Run, Diddy! Run! When you first come in the safe house, we need to make sure you're not a rogue spy or a bad spy. So if you don't know the password, you have to go through a fun interrogation, and sometimes that can be acting out a skit, or maybe if you're with somebody, doing a little dance together. After being closed due to the pandemic for over a year, you are reopening. We are excited. We're bringing all our spies in from the cold, and they're excited to have refuge at the safe house. It's just super important to bring that back right now and to have that available to everybody who's everyone who wants a safe place to come and enjoy and experience restaurant and bar. We have five different sectors in the safe house. All of them come with a museum-esque type feel, artifacts, donated items. It takes you back in time and it really helps you remember everything that, that has happened in each one of those sectors. Where are we now? We're in the German sector. Right over here we have a piece of the Berlin Wall. And it was actually donated by a master sergeant who was stationed in Germany when the wall was coming down. What is that over there? That's a Stasi cell door. A Stasi as in the prison? As in the prison, yeah. The door was actually donated by a spy who stayed in the prison. And when it turned into a museum, he got one of these doors and he donated to the safe house. This is an actual door that was in the Stasi prison? From the 1960s, yes. There's always something to see, and I'm not sure if it's possible to do it in one visit. They can change. I want to thank you so much for offering me refuge, but I fear that they're hot on my heels. I gotta go. Well, a good spy never leaves the building the same way they enter it. There's a secret escape for you right over this way. Wait for the phone to ring and follow the instructions. If you see him, you don't know me. You know, if I had any sense, Steve, I probably couldn't do this job. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you found your way out and made your way back here. Oh, I'm glad Agent Dee Dee did yes. at least. Agent Dee Dee did. <laughs> so, there's Rod Burks now. That's it, there is, and you know what? He minds his own hidden gems, especially businesses, new and old, uh, who are constantly in need of your support. One thing's for sure, Rod loves his barbecue. Recently, he <laughs> went to Heaven's Table Barbecue, and there was one question he really wanted an answer to. 
How long did you really smoke your brisket, buddy? Uh, we smoked for about 12 to 14 hours. 12, 12, 12 to 14 hours, yeah. huh? Okay, yeah. there you go. So, and, and this one's been in the, in the smoker how long? This one's 12 to 14 hours. Okay, let's go. And then we're gonna serve it with our house baked beans. Now, there you go. Some brisket and some house baked beans. Now, what's in your beans now? Uh, we put brisket and sausage in our beans. And the brisket's been out how long? Uh, 12 to 14 hours. 12 to 14 hours. Folks, you gotta try Heaven's Table Barbecue. Now, how long do you smoke these ribs? These are uh, three to four hours. Three to four hours, on, uh, okay. So these are the finished product. Okay, the finished product, they smoke for how long? Uh, three to four hours, depending on the... Okay, good. I'll get this out of the way okay. here. Now the key is, oof. So we're just gonna keep it upside down. Like we keep our ribs upside down so this time we'll serve it to the customer. Right, now he's so, got a smoker out back and these smoke for how long? Three to four hours. Okay, three to four hours. There you go, Steve. How about those ribs? Mm, mm, good. Rod Burks has a great memory, it's just short. Oh my God. <laughs> all jokes aside, these places deserve, uh, serve as reminders of all the businesses that are out there supporting our community and the community supports them. Here, for real now, is a taste of Rod Burks. If you're looking for a cool new experience, why don't you try the new spot in town called Dak Shack MKE on North Green Bay Avenue. How did this whole Dak Shack come about? So it came about my husband and I do a lot of traveling. My family is from New Orleans and every time we went to New Orleans, I would rave about the daiquiri. So I wanted to bring something from the South with a ton of flavor to Milwaukee. So um, we have 10 different flavors. So our strawberry, our blue raspberry, pina colada, all of those are made with rum. Right now, our mystery, which will change out monthly, that one is made with whiskey currently. The peach bellini has a champagne in there. Margarita has the tequila, of course. Here at the Dak Shack, they got incredible wings, of course, great daiquiris, and this selfie room. Cheese! We have the hookahs, we have the selfie room. That's a big, big feature that we would like people to experience. Even though we're Crowded at the door, we try to make sure that everybody knows that we have more um, for them experience here up in our upper dining. They have great drinks here, but their food is also a big hit. Their variety of wings and flatbread pizzas are their best sellers. So for people that haven't been here at the Dak Shack, why should people give you guys a try? There's no reason for you not to come here. Again, if you don't come in, you're doing yourself a disservice. So if you want to come out, try something new for a date night, it's kind of limited in Milwaukee, but hey, here's a new idea for you to come out, try some drinks, have some wings, or even a salad. We have salmon on the menu. There's open options, and we have different um, drink combinations as well. And don't forget to stop in the selfie room and tag us on Instagram or Facebook. We're at Dak Shack MKE. I'm Rod Burks. Boy, we're open. <laughs> you know, there is a lot to love about Milwaukee, which is why it may come as no surprise that the city won a national poll declaring it the best city in the country. James Grow shows us what was behind that virtual battle. Milwaukee, you've almost won the title of the best city in the U.S. In a bracket-style tournament between the largest 64 metro areas across the country, the final round comes down to the number one overall seed New York City versus Milwaukee. And since this is voted on by the people, I'm here in the third ward trying to rally the troops to get some more votes so Milwaukee wins. Just like that, Milwaukee's lead and chances of winning have gone up. Let's back up though. All of this started with just a fun bracket challenge on Twitter. In head-to-head -head matchups, people would vote for their favorite city. It was started by Nolan Gray, a city planning researcher from UCLA. The seating was only based on population size. It was just an idea that popped into my head one day. Thought it would be funny, thought it would be good content, and uh, it's kind of taken on a life of its own. Milwaukee got behind it. As the 10 seed in the finals, this is a Cinderella story, but we got the facts to back it all up too. I mean, I haven't seen a single rat. I've been here all day. <laughs> I love the atmosphere. I love the people. I love just the, the mix of cultures that we have. I love the Pfizer Forum and the Third Ward and Bradford Beach. Milwaukee's better than New York City because it's smaller, it's more of a homier vibe. Also important to note, we beat Chicago to get to the finals. The voting only lasts for 24 hours. Search Best US City on TMJ4.com to vote. You could kind of consider this your civic duty. Let me tell you something. I'd rather live in the Brew City versus the Big Apple. I mean, what a Big 
Apple, how does that even work? In Milwaukee, James Grow, TMJ4 News. And this proves that those of us who choose to live here take great pride in the place that we call home. Very true. You know, Milwaukee used to be a bit of a hidden gem itself, but yes. looks like the secret's getting out, you guys. We, we like the sound of that. <laughs> All right, well, why is it that we do what we do here? What is the point of Milwaukee tonight? Well, we often hear from people, the news does not look like the place where we live. It's not diverse and it's too often too negative. Some people tell us they skip watching the news entirely so they don't feel overwhelmed. This is our attempt to try and change things. This program right here, Orion Jenkins goes 360 and why people are turning us off. For some people, local news offers a critical source of information. For others, reports of illness and crime are traumatizing. So we're going 360, talking to industry experts and to a psychologist on why balance and representation matter in local news. And we also talk to Milwaukeeans who avoid local newscasts and to those who call themselves loyal viewers. That's where we start. The local news tells you, gives you the information you need to live your life. I mean, quite, quite literally. Jim Galazeski watches local news every day, following updates about crime, COVID-19, and keeping tabs on our elected officials. Rebecca Burrell also watches, but sees something different. Representation matters, um, especially when you are Black, you've grown up um, in a colonized country. She's an activist, and she wants to see local news do a better job at showing the good happening all around us. I definitely appreciate being able to highlight our community for not only the negative things that happen, but also the positive things that happen. Dr. Anna Garner researches and teaches journalism at Marquette University. She says a lack of balance and representation can send an unintended message. And the problem is, is that those kinds of stories um, focus on the few bad apples or the few bad incidences when there are a whole group of people out there who are living their lives, they're working every day, they're trying to do good things for the communities and themselves, and none of that matters and none of that gets attention. Chantel Riley says local news lacks compassion. It was constantly like re-traumatizing me. She lost her son to gun violence a few years ago and says the negativity in the news led her to eventually turn it off for good. I originally stopped watching the news like I said I was done when I started noticing how we were reporting the COVID cases and deaths. It just felt like they were reporting them like sports stats. Mark Zaromsky, past president of the Milwaukee Press Club, agrees intentional balance is needed. I think the audience understands that I'm watching a newscast because I want to find out about the news. But who can blame them for saying, um, all you're giving me is crime news, so I'm so depressed by the end of it, I don't watch, want to watch news anymore. It's why psychologist Shyla Margain with UW Health says positive community-focused stories can really have an impact. When we see those positive stories, there's representation of what's possible, so we can um, see ourselves in that person's shoes, or it could open up new possibilities, or we could might just be inspired uh, to take action. A call for balance, positivity, and representation that's not going unheard by us here at TMJ4 News. Reporting in Milwaukee, I'm Ryan Jenkins. And that is exactly why we are here every weeknight at 6.30 on TMJ4. You know, doing these positive stories has really made me a better person. Yeah, I mean, we do six hours of news every day of everything that went wrong in their community. It is great that we take 30 minutes every day to remind people of what we are doing right, and there's so much of yes. it. We will be right back after this. I, did, I just want to say, take me out to the ball game, baby. So earlier today, I got very special lessons from shortstop Mason Davis. And honestly, I couldn't really focus too much because he had like these very well-developed biceps and it was kind of distracting. There's been a handful of times that we have taken the show on the road, but one of the most memorable was on top of Milwaukee tonight. We had our crews scattered across Milwaukee rooftops to give you a new perspective on the city we all call home. I was on top of the BMO Tower. You were having a good time Empty on top Journey. of the Kempton Journeyman. Others 
or elsewhere. In light of opening day next month, let's revisit Milwaukee's retractable roof. Here's Delaney Bry. For the Milwaukee Brewers, it's not just opening day that can bring some frigid temperatures. <laughs> From the end of March to late October, Mother Nature throws all kinds of curveballs. And while it's rare in Major League Baseball to have games completely scratched from the schedule due to weather, without a roof, fans could fall victim to the dreaded rain delay. Like the 7 hours and 23 minutes Chicago White Sox fans faced in 1990 before the game was finally called off. And let's be honest, while the frozen tundra is a magical place for football, seeing bats literally turn cold, not ideal. Which is why it's no surprise that the Toronto Blue Jays were the first team in MLB to place a retractable roof over the diamond. Today, Arizona Diamondbacks, Houston Astros, Miami Marlins, Seattle Mariners, Texas Rangers, and of course Milwaukee all have retractable roofs. In Tampa, the roof is a permanent fixture. As old fences are replaced throughout time, it makes sense to have some options, meaning American Family Field might not be North America's only fan-shaped convertible roof for long. But what it will always be is a great and dry place to play ball. And we are grateful we have that here in Milwaukee. We also took our show on the road in the name of Holiday Lights. That's right, Magic Lights at American Family Field hosted us to help the city of Milwaukee get into the holiday spirit. For 30 minutes, we showed off the big light display at the ballpark and also showcased your at home mm -hmm. from a couple uh, who turned on the lights for their Siberian Husky <laughs> to a guy who displayed uh, what you could. Yeah, you could control that from your own home. Exactly. Which was pretty amazing. It was. was dazzling. And we also sent you on the Lake Express Ferry across Lake Michigan <laughs> and uh, we sprung for the round trip ticket on that one. That's right. Thank God because I can't swim. <laughs> uh, the ferry service returns this May. Here's what you can expect next time you hear all aboard. It's the quickest way to cross Lake Michigan on water and lots and lots of fun. We're setting sail on the Lake Express High Speed Ferry. Come on. We're the first high speed auto passenger ferry uh, to ever go into service here in the United States. And uh, in, in season 18, uh, we're still going strong. We do about 800 crossings a year and we've done it uh, since 2004, so a lot, a lot of miles. We carry 248 passengers is our, our maximum capacity, 44 cars. And we carry 12 motorcycles, which just shave hours off the normal drive. So by the time most people are still, you know, looking out the window, cursing Chicago traffic, we're on the other side of the lake. But we're very unique and um, Sometimes it, it, it pays to look around and see who else is doing what you do. And then the, the answer to the question is, nobody else does this. Thanks again for choosing the Lake Express. We like to think of ourselves as, you know, almost first class style airline seating. There's tables, there's a lot more room to stretch out your legs. You're not bumping into the people ahead of you. Uh, especially for families, you have the ability to walk around. There's, there's wide aisles, there's outdoor areas too. So you'll see people gather outside and just enjoy seeing Lake Michigan from an absolutely different perspective. When we get to the other side of the lake, the doors open, you drive off, and you're where you want to be. But also, you get to look out the window and see Lake Michigan, you know, that, that never-ending horizon when you're in the middle of the lake, and the sight of it uh, is really spectacular. Is the ride smooth? It really was. It really was. Now, coming back in was so windy, I was afraid I was going to lose my wig. Sure. But the ride itself, I was. But I didn't. Here it is. Hang on to your hairpiece, everybody. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Each week I am joined by On Milwaukee's food and dining editor, Lori Frederick. She helps us dive into Milwaukee's food scene. Last summer we took a tour of what the State Fair had to offer. Welcome back everybody. I'm Steve Shamraz at the Wisconsin State Fair and I found Lori Frederick from On Milwaukee and we're going to talk some fair food. Fair food. Fair better, food. Better than fair. Better than the fair is the food. And we're doing dessert first. What exactly is this thing? 
So this is a pink squirrel, a deep fried pink squirrel. Okay. Which is basically the concept is based around the classic ice cream cocktail. The Bryant's drink. So essentially what this is, is this is a recreation of that drink in dessert form. And Water Street deep Brewery fried. is the place to find this. There we go. So let's cut it open. So let's do that. Oh, baby. Look at that. It is definitely pink. And what is it, cake and custard? So it's a cake that I believe has been soaked. Oh, my. You know, and so you're going to get, I mean, that classic almond flavor. All right, let's go. Mmm. It's naughty, <laughs> as things at the fair should be. All right, let's move on. All right, stop number two, and the dishes are not getting any lighter. What do we have here, Lori? We have the Sorrentina Bites from Albanese, and this is a ditalini pasta uh -huh. with four different Italian cheeses, okay. mozzarella, pecorino romano, um, parmesan cheese, and parmesan. Yeah. So it's like macaroni and cheese, Italian But Italian, style. and they give you a choice of sauces. Yes. That's the vodka sauce right there. Oh, look oh, at that. Yeah. We can even get a cheese bowl. Look oh, at that. Oh, 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 oh. I'll dunk first. What the heck? All right. That is a near perfect food right there. It's carbs and cheese. Beautiful together. Italian. And that is, does have a little zip. It it's does good. have a little kick. Fantastic. All right, next stop. Let's go. Well, we got a map. All right, Lori, we're sitting down for this one we because are. this is State Fair excess. The craziest. In a right? little paper bowl here. Yes. What is it? So we have cinnamon roll cheese curds. Uh huh. That means a deep fried cheese curd rolled in cinnamon and sugar, topped with bacon and cream cheese icing. I guess we have to. All right. It's why I, we're, it's why I we're here. I'm really curious what you think and of this. And I love that there you grabbed go. a fistful of napkins for I, this. I Cheer, did. Curd, curd cheers. Here we go. Cheers. cheers. It is as advertised. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's salty. Yeah. It's sweet. It's salty, it's sweet, it's cheese. You can't I, go wrong. You gotta try everything at the fair. All right, another one. Let's go, Lori. I think we have to call this the main course. We do. Because it's do. it's everything. This is this is everything. It's this called is, a glazy boy. The glazy boy. It is the Sporky's winner this year. It is a Greedy's glazed donut. Uh huh. With Belgioso Fontina cheese, <laughs> yes. raspberry mustard, and some lightly smoked pork. Loin. And jalapenos too and in there. Jalapenos. It's got a kick. All right, let's cut this thing and have a taste. Shall we? Cheers. There we go. I'm tasting nothing but really? donut here. Donut. Yeah, you gotta get that perfect bite with, with enough mustard. I think I got the perfect bite right here. Let's go. Mm. This is a crazy, crazy thing. It's I, nuts. I liken it to the Krispy Kreme uh, burgers, burgers yeah. that they were doing. But maybe, maybe better. One last stop. Let's go. And finally, uh, if you're a fan of these at State Fair, this is your last chance to get this, this at the your fair. Your last chance, absolutely. What is it? So these are stuffing balls. They are kind of Thanksgiving stuffing, deep fried, and they come with Rupina's special gravy. All right. This is your last chance to enjoy this delicacy at the State Fair. And it, it's as advertised. It is Thanksgiving in a bite. Thanksgiving in August. All we need is family squabbling, <laughs> and it's there. Yeah. Lori, thanks for coming out, showing us around the fair this year. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> and of all the things I ate at the fair that day, the one thing that stuck with me, I could not get the taste out of my mouth, what? was that glazy boy, the donut. That sweet uh, donut just stuck with me all day I long. I got a question. Yes. You're not counting calories, are you? Uh, well, that day I wasn't. <laughs> that, was, that was a good that day was a, That was a cheat day right there. <laughs> we'll be right back. What on God's green earth are you doing, Goddard? I'm going to take you out. <laughs> There, Renisha, I got you. Oh, 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 help me. I'm not coming back to the station. This is too much fun. Good night, everybody. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, we are dedicating an entire hour to revisiting some of the best moments from Milwaukee tonight. 30 minutes. 
five nights a week committed to showing the best of the community we all call home. Cassandra McShepard helps me do that every day when the clock strikes 630. That's right. And if I have learned anything since May is that Milwaukee has even more hidden gems than I realized, mm. including Wisconsin Knitwear. Mm -hmm. It's been around for 75 years and I recently got an inside look at this family owned business. Milwaukee used to be one of the largest textile cities uh, in the country. Now we are the last remaining uh, headwear company in Wisconsin and uh, well, in the United States there's only uh, a couple of us left. The machines that we run in our date back to 1940s. They're old but they work and you know they, they are efficient. So what about if they break down? What happens if they break? That's a very good question. In our basement, we have a, a graveyard of knitting machines that we pull from. But when I say we use duct tape, we use duct tape. We've learned over the years what to do. There are no computers here. I draw everything on graph paper. Wait, you what? Yeah, there are no computers. All designs are done by me by hand on graph paper with a pencil and, 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 and pen and colored ink. After we do that, we, we take it and we punch out the needles by hand. And once that's done, we put that on the machine. After the hat is created, we send it down the slide. Put it over the tube. And a joke, it's a very uh, state-of-the-art tube and air. So we put the... Uh, material over and it sucks in the, the the tube and we bring it out, make sure it's folded in half, and then the next phase is sewing the top of the hat. Pom-poms um, have been very popular for uh, the past 10 years. Everybody wants the, the, their pom-poms on. Sometimes we get orders and they don't want the poms on and they send them back, can you please put poms on? We ship you know, all over the United States and all over the world. You know, it's fun to see. A lot of people think that, oh, these hats are made uh, in China or Japan, or, and then I have to explain to people, no, actually, we produce for them. It's old school. It's the retro look. Schools, uh, bands, organizations that need hats to, to, for fundraising, all different types of hats, all different lettering and designs, and it's really fun to see and create. We get a lot of you know, people wanting that old school look in our hats and that's what we're known for. So I saw that hat right there with Milwaukee Tonight on, and it, on the you, screen and I'm like, yeah. I, I, I need to get one of those. Yeah. And I was so surprised really at how much you wanted one and I got you. And she walked it over to me live on the air and made my day. Exactly. And then we made a lot of other people's days in the newsroom because we exactly. had a couple extras to spread the love around. Mm -hmm. All right. James Grow was another piece of our Milwaukee Tonight puzzle. He always finds the best characters and personalities that are perfect representations of Milwaukee. Woo! These can really push back. That's how you do it. Pause. That's me, James Grow, a foam sword fighting champion. It's a giant cheese curd on a burger. I can't wait to try this. Mm. That's honestly everything you want and more. Tell me, what is it about dads and wearing Air Monarchs? You know, the Grillmaster 3000s. I don't know. They are the most comfortable and light shoe I've ever had. It's probably my 10th pair. <laughs> How many do you own right now? Four to six. You might be asking, why is he in a rope? Well, I'm at the Zocalo food truck park where there's a new pop-up business. And it's not a food truck. It's sauna. It's the perfect way just to relax and chill. Oh, that's really nice. Let's see what I can do. Nah, 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 nah. It was the wind. It wasn't me. It was the wind. It was the wind in Milwaukee, James Grow. TMJ4 News. <laughs> I'm convinced James Grow has the second most fun of anyone I'm on this thinking, show. After I loved you. We need to pause for the James Grow cause, as I'm saying. He's quite a dude. It has been said. Now, one of the personalities <laughs> James has managed to capture so well is Amando Duckworth. He's turned his life around after being released from prison, putting all of his effort into change and accountability. 
every day since I've been home. I'm out here every day, no matter the weather, no matter what, I'm out here. <sighs> Even the minor stuff creates change. The Amondo Duckworth you see now, the one cleaning his neighborhood of hypodermic needles, and it had something in it too, <laughs> is not the same one you would have met 10 years ago. I was gang banging, selling drugs, robbing, you name it, I was a part of it. This photo was taken of him in Boscobel Prison in southwestern Wisconsin. I ended up getting sentenced to 30 years in prison. Uh, I was convicted of two armed robberies and um, possession of a firearm by a felon. He appealed and got out after 12 and a half years. Now he's a new man. When you ask me who I am, I tell people I am change. Since earning his freedom, Amondo has dedicated his life to the community. I do youth mentoring, I do um, community cleanups, I feed the homeless. Yep. And he organizes neighborhood cleanups. Yeah. In just about an hour, they filled bag after bag after bag. If I reach one person, that person reaches another. And it just spreads, like the domino effect, like we were talking about earlier. I'm real emotional about change because I just lost my auntie. I have a funeral to go to on Saturday. And she always told me, nephew, you need to change. You need to get right. You need to. And I was so glad when she said, nephew, you doing it. That commitment to change goes beyond just himself. That means if my son is committing crimes, I have to be willing to turn my son in. Which is what he did. Amondo turned his son in for stealing a car. How can I say I'm about change if I'm letting my son do the stuff that I'm preaching against? It wasn't easy. That hurt me to my core. But Amondo realized that change has to start with him. Because without accountability, we can't say that we're about change. Where would we be if everybody in the world just said, I give up? And that's what keeps me motivated. In Milwaukee, James Grow, TMJ4 News. James, thank you for that. All right, one of my favorite places is Donut Monster over in Whitefish Bay. It has come a long way since it began as a pop-up shop. That's right. It's located near Elkhart Avenue and Henry Clay Street. Rod Burks takes us inside the bakery. For Jackie Woods, it's time to make the donuts. This is what he called the donut grind. To perfection. Hey, tell me this process of what you're working on. This is the, all the dairy that goes into the sour cream donut. This was the first donut we ever made. This is like version 17. We failed a lot until it got this good. Jackie never thought he'd be making donuts for a living, but that all changed when his wife got pregnant with her second child. My wife was about eight months pregnant, and I had to go get her some donuts. So we got her some donuts, and she ate them, couldn't finish them threw them out, and I thought to myself, I can beat that. I can do better than that. Let's try. And that's what Jackie did. He had no background in donut making, but what he did have was 18 years of fine dining experience. He's worked at some of the best restaurants in Milwaukee, to Chicago, and Napa Valley. So when you threw the donuts out, what made you think that you could be owning a donut shop? When I say I'm a little too confident? <laughs> <laughs> a little too sure of myself, but yeah, it was definitely a lot of self-belief. My background, I've been cooking for a long time. So that drive and determination pushed him to open up the Donut Monster, which carries some of the most popular donuts in town. His first location is in Whitefish Bay. It's a two-day process, and I want it in. I found this story, this, this Monster Donuts story so awesome that I thought I wanted to help these guys out, so I want to get my hands all cleaned up here gonna make you work for it. This is our pastry scraper, already pre-used. Okay. Yeah, huh? <laughs> and you're gonna go ahead and scoop out as much as you can. Ah, so lay it like that? Just lay it on in there. We're trying to evenly distribute it between the four. Hey, Katie, can I just tell you all this gook on my hand doesn't feel too great? But it tastes delicious. <laughs> Give me your hottest donuts, man. Well, the hottest donut for sure is a sprinkle donut. Okay. Every single kid comes in, Every single kid would get a sprinkle donut. Then I would go cinnamon toast. So the cinnamon toast donut, and I would say next is brown butter. Brown butter is super popular. And the demand in this town for his donuts is on a whole nother level. It's 3 a.m. and it's time to make the donuts. I'm with the donut man himself, the champ Jackie. What are we doing here? Right now we're just frying up some donuts. 
these are the old fashioned donuts. And he's gonna drop them in there for a minute, minute and a half on each side. Mm -hmm. And what is this right here? Uh, donut flippers, AKA. Okay, have you ever heard of a donut flipper? You got the glaze going here, right? So just a little dip and a flip? Yeah. And tell me a little bit about your growth. It would get crazy. There'd be lines around the block. I think the most cars I ever counted was like 55. 55 cars? Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> it's like, Whitefish Bay is gonna be real mad at me. You just go outside and see the line, and you're like, I'm, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> like, this is crazy. Like, I can't believe you all showed up for this. We're at the Donut Monster, making them donuts. I'm Rob Burks. Or we're open. So I have been in that line more times you than I should not. probably admit. Really? And here's the thing. What? They're so popular that if you get the, if you get to like 11 o'clock on a Saturday, they could be sold out. Stop. They run out of donuts because so many people know they're that good. You know, as we're going through this show, one of the things I'm taken by is how many wonderful businesses we have uh, here in Milwaukee. It's so many out there. I mean, they are the backbones of our community. Yeah. I mean, they're putting people yeah. to work. They're making our neighborhoods more interesting, and we are happy to celebrate them on Absolutely. this broadcast. We'll do more of that on the other side of a break. Stay with us. Milwaukee tonight is rooted in the community. We want our show to represent Milwaukee as a whole. It's why we celebrate different cultures and experiences every chance we get. That's right, and celebrating Milwaukee's LGBTQ community, we highlighted fashion icon Elle Halo. She's a transgender Milwaukee woman whose larger-than-life persona is dwarfed by some incredible activism. Here's James Grell. When Elle Halo walks into a room, I look so beautiful. It's hard to miss her. It's not just because of her fashion. It's a slang. Or her infectious laugh. <laughs> While all those contribute to her presence, what really makes her special is something you can't see right away. A board member here at Diverse and Resilient, and I'm the Inclusion Health Program Specialist for Planned Parenthood of Wisconsin. And I'm also a SHIBA member and co-organizer for the Black Growth Initiative. She's organized marches, helped create transgender specific support groups, and so much more. I want you to know that black trans women are women. I want you to know that we are proud, that we are strong, that we are beautiful. According to the National LGBTQ Task Force, black trans women face some of the highest rates of violence and discrimination. The Human Rights Campaign said 44 trans or non-gender conforming people were killed in 2020, the majority of which were black or Latin. Next. I definitely experienced a lot of sexual harassment. Even in Pride Month last weekend, one of our girls was, was attacked right here um, at the gas station on Holton and North. The violence that we face is unacceptable. Her work doesn't go unnoticed though. Last year, she was incorporated into this mural in Milwaukee that features some of the most prominent activists and organizers in the city. Feel pride in the connection to um, my image being up there with the other people that are featured. And while putting herself out there in such a public fashion can be dangerous. Essentially, really, the only tool we have to fight back. Which is one of the reasons she loves fashion. This is a form of expression for her. I work hard for this body, I work hard for them coins, work hard for the clothes, work hard for the look, you know what I'm saying? No one is going to silence Elle. In fact, she's just getting started. In Milwaukee, James Grow, TMJ4 News. James Grow, thank you. Last month, we celebrated black history on Milwaukee Tonight. That's right, and music is such a part of our everyday lives, and the many rhythms and chords that we all recognize have African roots. I dug into that history. A large part of celebrating Black History Month is the music, and it all started in the motherland. The contributions of Africans in America to American music and world music um, is monumental. What we call America's popular music has its foundation in the rhythms, the polyrhythms, the wonderful tones, the musical tones, and the ingenuity, the innovative spirit of Africans 
from the continent who were brought here um, as a part of um, the, the institution of slavery. But out of this horrific experience has come a gift from these Africans who are our ancestors. So let's see if, if this sounds familiar. Yes, it does, but what is it? It's a blues scale. But, okay, but, but okay. so it's, it's a, a blues it's, it's scale. It's a sound that I'm hearing. Is it, I guess it's, it's in the many blues. songs. Then. It's in many songs. Okay. So you, if you hear, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yes. From West Africa, the balafone. This is the beginning. And just think, it stayed within people, in their heart, in their soul, in their voice, so that when we came here and we started creating the music, that memory helped us to create then the blues and the spirituals, the work songs, the shouts, the hollers, the um, ragtime, yeah. uh, the other forms of jazz, rock and roll, boogie woogie, all from this instrument, the balafone, the foundation. I like how you sneak a little education into everything you do for us. I like it. Dun, 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 dun. There's some more Cassandra. We'll be right back. Rosalia, while we've been talking, you've been over there drawing. Show us what you've done. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> oh my God, it's me. Everything's gonna be all right with a victory tonight now. Everything's gonna be all right with a victory tonight. Come on, sing. Milwaukee tonight is a major component of the Bucks NBA Finals run. We turned our show into a chasing a championship special every night of the run. Cassandra McShepard was singing there with songwriter Chris Pipkins, urging people to get up and celebrate the city during one of the greatest moments in Milwaukee history. That is a moment I could relive over and over again. It was uh, amazing. We hope we actually get to relive that again as the Bucks defend their championship. That's right. And you know, I was in the streets with the Bucks fans the day after the big win. And can I tell you, it was an electrifying experience. I'm at the championship parade and we are talking to Bucks super fans like these little guys right here. <laughs> The city is in complete celebration. It's been a long time coming. We are so glad to be here. Go Bucks! Yeah. Woo! Champions! I've seen games at the Mecca, the Bradley Center, and the Fiserv Forum, so I waited my whole life for this. This is amazing. Bobby, 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 Bobby. Am I talking to Bucks super fans here? You are talking to Bucks super fans. Go Bucks! Did you know they were going to do it? I had a feeling. That day, I was down downtown and I could just feel it in the air. I've never felt this city that electric that day my whole life. The Milwaukee Bucks are NBA champions! I do love that the prophecy wow. Bucks, it, Bucks and Six know, came right. true. That was so awesome. I'm falling in love with this city all over again. Let's do it again this summer. We'll be right back. So if you've not been able to catch us on a weeknight at 6.30, we hope this last hour has kind of got you up to speed on what it is we do 
every night at 6.30 on TMJ4. Can I say what it is we love to do? Because again, going back, looking back in a year in review, mm -hmm. I'm like, I like this show. I do too. <laughs> I like really that we cool. get people to places that are just around the corner, just in the neighborhood that they don't even know about. And we can bring those into your home five nights a week. An extension of this broadcast can be found online. It's as easy as MilwaukeeTonight.com. Find all of Cassandra's hidden gems, Rod's Wear Opens, all the places James Grow has been around our town. <laughs> Hey, that is it for this special hour-long edition of Milwaukee Tonight. Watch us every weeknight at 6.30 right here on TMJ4 News. It's been great. Yes, it has. See you next time. We love it here. Their specialty is European beer, and they make plenty of it. I can't wait to try this. One of the many wonderful things to do here in our hometown this summer. We love it out here, don't we? <laughs> Yay! They do their barbecue Memphis style. And do I have to tell you folks? Mmm. Mm, good. And that is how you do it. <laughs> so we have I'm sorry. I'm, this is awesome. This is Noah Waldker. He's a defending Wisconsin State arm wrestling champion. And we're not the best, but we're so close to it, we just don't brag it. We let the Milwaukee speak for itself. What brought us, my family, your family, our people, right. to Milwaukee. Right. And let me tell you this, it takes a lot more than what I got to be an Olympian. Do I have what it takes? There we go. Nice work. Whistling straights, here I come. Let's go shopping. They are all experienced blacksmiths, welders, fabricators. I discovered that I'm actually pretty good at it. This is a cheesy place, what do you expect? Everybody needs that cup. Even though she's eight months pregnant, she loves doing construction. I just want to make people's lives better with, with these murals. Wait, there's coffee and donuts in here. A lot of it, yeah. <laughs>